Hi, I think we've got a slight delay. Lovely of you to all join me. Um, it's, oh, I'm so pleased to be here. My name's Sharon and I'm going to be leading you through a um, collage workshop today looking at identity. And it's the first of three um, workshops as Jen highlighted to you. Um, identity, so when we're looking at identity, what we're looking at is um, who a person is, all the kinds of things that make up that, you know, the qualities that make that person up. Um, so what we'll be doing today is looking at colour and texture and pattern. I've been creating a series entitled Seeing Ourselves now for the last three years. <laughs> and I absolutely love creating this work. Um, I have a few pieces just behind me here that you can see. Um, and yeah, I... I thought I would start actually by just running through the types of materials you're going to need for the workshop. I hope everyone can hear me really clearly um, and let me know if you can't. So the materials that you will need today are a ruler. <laughs> I'm going to do it like this. Um, yeah, so we're going to have a ruler, also some glue. And if you have a pack, if you downloaded a pack and you've been sent one, then we've got lots of different types of paper. So different colours, um, different textures. So I'm going to use this screen, I think, to show you that. I've also got some magazines. So, and I'm going to talk to you about why I started making this series as we go along, because I think it's just easier for it to flow in that way. So yeah, I've got some magazines and... I'll be pulling different bits and pieces out of the magazines. Um, and I tend to work on a, on a cutting mat with a scalpel knife. However, for today's session, we're going to be cutting and tearing and gluing and layering. And what you also might have is the, is this? <laughs> so it's the words um, kind of just going through exactly how you might be feeling at this time. And I think that might be a good place to start. Um, so the kinds of words, I'm gonna move over to this screen. Uh, kinds of words we have, I've got quite a few things to show you actually, but um, let's start with the words. So here, I'm gonna move that across and we'll talk about that piece shortly. So the kinds of words we have here are um, angry, irritated, frustrated, but we also have words like relaxed, quiet, calm. And the reason why I thought we could start with this is so that we could um, start looking at how we're feeling right now, just to connect with um, our emotions really. So um, what I think I'm going to do is to, I think that kind of word, calm, is st standing out for me now because I'm starting to kind of relax into this and I'm really enjoying the fact that I'm here today. So calm is one word that stands out and quiet and quite relaxed, but I also feel quite energised today. But what I want us to do is to actually um, translate our feelings into a collage art piece. So the kind of work I create actually helps me to relax. So here I created this paper cut of Dorcas, who is an artist. I create collages that feature black women. It's my way of um, celebrating black women in a world where quite often we're not celebrated and reaffirming my identity and who I actually am and yeah. I, I absolutely love creating these pieces. They take quite a bit of time to create. You can see how fragile they are. If I hold them up, you can see. But they help me to connect with being calm and relaxed. Here's another piece I recently created. I went away. So with these pieces, I tend to use a, a scalpel knife, like I said. They're very intricate, but they help me to just slow down and relax. And this is why I love creating this work. So to create these the pieces that we're going to work on, the pieces we're going to work on today, 
We don't actually need a scalpel knife. Um, if you have scissors, then that's fine to go ahead and use them. Got some images that I'm kind of... So if now, if you'd like to start looking um, through the images and think about the kinds of words that you're connecting with currently, and we'll start to go from there. I'm going to do the same. And I'll give you a, just a minute or so to do that. So I'm just going to start looking at some images. I really love floral images, as you can see. So I'm just placing a few here. Okay. So you can get quite a few images um, together or different types of patterns or textures that you feel drawn to. Feeling quite drawn to this one. I use a lot of nature in my work. And um, the reason for that is because I love to celebrate natural Afro hair. And I feel as though it's a really beautiful way of doing so um, by using these kinds of images. I tend to take the photos myself. I'm just starting to tear this section here. Um, yeah, I tend to take the photos myself. And then I, I, I cut around images or I can tear around images. So if you just like to start pulling a few pieces together, I just recently got this book. So I'm gonna have a quick flick through and see if there's anything else. I quite like the look. Of this set here. So I'm just gonna tear this. Mm. Okay. Right. So while you're doing that, just pulling different sections together, I thought I would just very quickly um, show you an image of a piece. I start gathering bits of um, fabric, not fabric necessarily, sorry, um, paper, images. I'm going to show you this piece here, just as an example. So this piece is, is something I created a while ago. Um, feeling them, they might be super positive today. Maybe you're not feeling positive and that's completely fine. But I created this piece when I wasn't feeling in a particularly positive mood, <laughs> but I knew exactly where I wanted to be. I knew that I wanted different things from life. Um, and there are some really joyous kinds of positive affirmation type words there. That's a huge piece <laughs> that I created at Art College. Um, when I created the piece, it wasn't, it wasn't actually particularly well received, but um, I decided to stick with it. And now um, I'm creating collages and working full time as an artist in London, which I absolutely love. I'm now living my dreams and delivering workshops is something I've been doing a while and absolutely love doing that. So I think what we can do here, let's go back to this. So now you should have a few pieces that you're um, that you're going to work with. So I'm going to fold this section here. I think I feel like working quite small for this one. Let's take a look. I've just given that a slight fold, and I'm using the ruler as a little guide there. I tend to do is to layer different sections, cut sections out as well, to reveal other patterns or textures underneath. I want to do here. And don't forget, if you do have any questions as we're going along, if you do want to just pop 
questions in and Jen will answer the questions at any point. Right, I'm just going to do a slight hair here. So what I'm doing here is I'm just creating a different shape from this piece. The thing I love about collage is that there aren't any rules. I don't feel as though you can make mistakes. I feel as though you can be really free to create how you want to create. Okay. So I've just created a kind of window there. just want to neaten that up slightly. So I feel as though, you know, sometimes I feel, well, quite often I do with this, when, when we're living in a world where there's so many rules, it's nice to have something creative to play with, where you can make the rules. It just feels very special. So you'll see that I'm kind of guiding this around. So what I'm doing is I'm just looking for a section that I like the look of in this section here. I think it's there. That's what I'm going to use. You might also have a pen. You might want to just pull the section out. So like like I said, this is the first three sessions. The, um, I think one of the other sessions we will be working with the outline of the portrait. But for this one, what I really wanted us to do is just to um, just to start playing with textures and layers and patterns and see how they See how they work together. What I will do is show you far more of my pieces. I share lots of my work on social media. I have a lot on social media. Um, on my Instagram account, which is London underscore artist one. And there you'll see. I do apologize if anyone's experiencing any technical issues. I think there might be a slight delay. Yeah, um, I thought so. Sharon's microphone, but hopefully we'll give that a few seconds and it will improve. I was getting a lot. Is it okay? Yeah, I think we can hear you now, Sharon. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now. Brilliant. <laughs> Okay, so putting out these sections. So while we're making this work, what we're doing is we're thinking about the words that we thought of um, at the beginning. So I pulled out words, I was calm, quiet, energetic. I'm getting the energetic from the colour. I feel like the purple is very vibrant. Okay. But I kind of like the muted tone of the of the grey. I really like this. So I just want to turn a section like that. If 
We've had a really lovely comment come through, Sharon. Um, an anonymous attendee has yeah. said, amazing nails. Uh, what, what did the attendee say? They were complimenting your amazing nails. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, it's another way that I relax is by painting my nails. But I just get really irritated when they are. <laughs> <laughs> my smudge, one smudge just before, but I think okay, it's okay now. Let me move that down so you can see. Yeah, I like bringing colour and texture and patterns into the way I dress as well. I find that it really helps my mood. And I also wear super bright lipstick, which you might have noticed earlier on. I just like really bold colours. I'm literally just playing and seeing where this goes. And this work is very different from the work that you'll see um, on my social media, but it's all leading up to the same point, which is um, building different layers and textures and pulling different sections underneath each other. Um, I think at this point, what I might do is to show you what I mean by that just very quickly. So I'm just going to put this here over the top. You can see a huge light there, which isn't helpful. <laughs> Oops, let's leave that. Sleep up there. Okay. Let me see if I hold that there. That's better. Okay. So this is where I've used different sections. You can see here different patterns and different textures layered up. And, oh yeah, I have actually used something quite similar color-wise to what I'm using in this um, workshop. So it's a really gray muted um, background with really vibrant colors. Seems like that's what I enjoy doing. <laughs> so this piece was created um, a couple of years ago uh, and I've layered again, you might be able to see this is just a very fine outline. But the reason why we're doing the work we're doing today is so that we can get used to kind of moving different patterns and textures against each other just to see how they work. So it's kind of very similar to this, but without that section. And is that photographic paper that you've used there, Sharon, or is it kind of magazine pages? So these are magazine pages, these ones. Um, when I have work printed, so when I have photographs printed, printed um, the guy that I work with, the printer, he actually prints stuff for me on as close to magazine quality paper as we possibly can, but also um, we ensure that it's archival quality paper as well, so it won't be hugely affected by light and all the elements. <laughs> but yeah, I have um, quite a lot of pieces constantly um, printed and um, and made, especially for commissions and works that I'm I'm creating. Okay, so so let's put that there. I still want some more floral, and I kind of like. So this is another photograph that I. I took a while ago. So you might just be putting bits and pieces out of magazines, but just pull different sections together, cut and tear, be as playful as you like. As I said earlier, there aren't any rules, just have fun with this. I'm gonna pull this section off. So this is slightly heavier. Jen mentioned earlier about the paper. And this is heavier than magazine paper. You probably could tell by the way I ripped it. Um, but I had actually had that printed for a commission and then it didn't actually, I didn't need it in the end. It didn't work in the way that I wanted it to. So I never ever know what I'm going to create before I create it. <laughs> which is, um, I know for some people might feel like an absolutely crazy thing to do, but 
I am really controlled in so many other areas of my life that I feel as though I just need to be a bit free with collage. I don't know how the rest of you feel about that. I, don't know. I think it's about doing what works best for you. And just going with the flow. Just to let everyone know that we're about halfway through our workshop today, but this is the first part of three workshops with Sharon. So please do bring this back next week and we can continue to build upon it. I'd like to say a big hello to all the units that have joined us today. We've got ES1 Maud at Morsley Hospital. Thank you so much for being with us. We've also got Johnson PQ in the Ladywell. I'm really enjoying this because it's this piece feels very different from what I usually create, which is a really nice feeling because quite often you can continue doing the same kinds of pieces because just because it feels right and you've got a tried and tested kind of method, but I really like the playfulness of this. And it's just given me a bit more space to be freer. But also I do feel that it's um, kind of opportunities like this that, that help you to push the work in different directions and just think differently. So what I think I want to do is I, I'm not sure that necessarily works. So you might lay pieces down and then look at them again and go, actually, I don't like it. What we're doing now is we're just so I prefer that now. <laughs> what we do, I might start gluing. So the gluing part for me is always a bit, um, it's a little bit nerve wracking to be honest sometimes, just because I think it's a commitment thing, but I can always um, tear things off and then re-glue. Yeah, I think I prefer it like that. Okay. So, some of you might have started gluing already, and that's completely fine. Just do things at your own pace. So what I'm doing now is I'm just turning one of the sections on the reverse, taking the glue right to the edges, right to the edges. I'm making sure I get my nails in now that I've had the compliment. <laughs> But also you want to ensure that you don't put too much glue on because you really don't want this to be gloopy or wrinkly. Technical words there. <laughs> so during this series that I've been creating, I've, I've made over 250 collages. Um, I've sold to collectors all over the world. And um, my one of my recent projects was where, well, in January, it's not so recent now, is it? But I, uh, I created a large scale paper cut collage for ITV. And um, it was shown just before every single program in January. That was one of the biggest projects I've worked on. And all of the mock-ups for the work was created on small A4 cutting mats. I'm not a very technical person at all. I love the process of making. I love craft. I love making work in this way. And I also love how this series came about, which was... Um, which was because I had an ankle injury a few years ago and I had been using running as my form of stress relief. And um, with my injury, I couldn't paint anymore and I couldn't run. So that was difficult, <laughs> to put it lightly. And I kind of looked around the house and looked at what I had 
And because I, I have studied fine arts, so I went to Central St. Martins and I graduated 10 years ago as a mature student. Um, you're meant to say in the comments, you don't look old enough. Um, <laughs> I think I wanted to fold that back and leave it because it's going to be quite difficult to fold. Yeah, so I, I looked at the materials that I had in the house and I had some magazines and I had a cutting mat and some glue. And I actually had a scalpel knife because I had used them before. And I started to create collages every day. And first of all, I started with work that was very similar to this. And then I started to look for images of women, of black women with natural Afro hair. And every time I came across one of the images, I would cut it out and start to create work. And I would remove sections, revealing different sections beneath, so quite similar to the piece I showed you earlier. And would build up different layers and patterns. Right, I'm gonna put that aside for one second and just show you another piece of work. So you can carry on um, with what you're doing there. I just thought I'd show you this piece. It's all wrapped. It's actually already, it's been purchased by someone, which is why it's wrapped. <laughs> it's all ready to go. But this is another piece that I've used with these sections here. These are all strips of an image that have all been put together to build up another image. And then this is the very fragile paper cut image that I've layered on top. The thing that I find most interesting about this piece is um, what you can read in the boot. I don't know if you can see it. So it actually says loved, which was completely unintentional. But um, I remember creating this piece and staying up until around three o'clock in the morning and just absolutely falling in love with the process as I often do with the works I make. Okay, let's go back. If there are any questions, Jen, feel free to answer them. We have got a question from Flo Bretherton, who says, okay. I love your work. What inspires your portraits the most? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think I'm initially drawn to the, the face of the person. So before it would be if I was out and I, I was fortunate enough to meet someone. That happens less so now. <laughs> Um, just because of the times we're in but um, so yeah it's gen so for example with um, the Dorcas piece it was I'm just drawn to the so drawn to the image or I'm drawn to the person's face or the features or I can immediately see the sections that I would um, work with because I see the I see the faces and, and bodies generally being built up into lots of different sections and I think that goes back to being um, a painter uh, years back. Um, I guess you never really stop being a painter, but I just haven't worked in that practice for a while. So I'm drawn to people's faces, um, drawn to nature as well, um, and patterns and texture. That's what I love to play with. But also the idea that um, the idea of being seen and celebrated. I do this both in my art practice, but also in my work as a, an educator. So I work with a number of different organizations. I'm currently working with the National Maritime Museum on a project where we are looking at images and representation of um, people of the African diaspora. Sorry, I was just having a moment to think about where I want to go next. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm working on lots of different projects and I like the way that it all leads back to working with voices that are underrepresented, um, which is something I've done with lots of different types of communities for many years. But working in this way kind of feels as though it feeds into all of that work. 
Fantastic. That's thank you for that, Sharon. That's great. Um, I'd just like to say a big hello once again to Claire Ward Ladywell. Um, big hello to Jim Burley Unit and everyone that's joining us from there. Thank you so much for turning up to Digital Art School every single week. We do notice you. Um, big hello to Ellis Ward from Tolworth Hospital as well. And Sharon, we've had a really lovely comment come through uh, from someone anonymous, actually, that says, I'm blown away with your work. I love nature, too. Mm -hmm. You have inspired me to do something different. Thanks a lot for the workshop. Oh, gosh, that's such a lovely comment. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I think nature for me is so healing. Um, I don't know if you can notice in the background, but I've, yeah, I've got a huge plant there. <laughs> And I have what I call my plant babies. Can you see that? Yeah, I think you can, can't you? Yeah, I have lots of plant babies in this room. So I have them hung up around the room here in my studio at home. And I have a number of them on my desk. The whole plan of having a, a large desk was so that I could um, make large pieces of work. But what I seem to have done is to have filled it with, uh, with more nature. <laughs> okay, let me just tear that off because... Okay, I think what this is missing is, for me, is some pattern, I need more pattern. And I think the pink that I was trying to put, this pink here, for me, doesn't really, doesn't really work. And what you might want to do is just to move your work around a bit and just play with that. Remember what I said earlier, there are no wrong, oops, I need to clear that better. There are no right or wrong ways of doing this. Just find a way that works for you. I was working with a school virtually um, last week and there was one child who was having a few problems with um, cutting the pieces. I really struggled with that. But I did ask the, um, I'm just looking through now for another pattern. Um, I did ask the teacher to, to help that child by offering an alternative to, to them creating. Because the last thing I would want is for people to feel as though if they can't do the work in the way that I'm doing it, that they can't continue. Just take a few moments to breathe and reflect and just look at the work. Maybe take a step back if you can and just give it a few moments and then go back into it. Try not to have too much judgment over what you're doing, but just trust in the process. Some reason I'm going for a lot of straight lines. You can actually tear as well, so you don't have to work in this way. You can free tear if that's so. <laughs> okay. I think I'm going to try this piece. Yeah. So most of the pieces that I created. Um, were actually made on an A4 cutting mat on my lap in the, in the front room. So having a studio is actually very new for me. I only had, I've only had a studio since last. So, sorry, I'm just having a think. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that works. Yeah, so I've only had a studio since last year. And so it's a completely new thing for me, working from this space. I actually prefer creating on the sofa in front of the TV, because I never concentrate on TV programs. <laughs> um, and I just find it really, really relaxing. just to let everyone know we've got about five minutes left of the workshop today 
Um, but please do continue your pieces afterwards if you can and do bring them back for next week's session. Well, that's gone really quickly. <laughs> I'm really enjoying myself and I feel really relaxed. I hope you guys do too. Um, I hope you feel really relaxed. I've really enjoyed actually making something very different from my other pieces. It's um, because I think no matter how many pieces you create, there are always things to learn. Thought I might just um, this piece here. It's so funny the things you can see in pieces of work because I can now see an eye in that piece. Nobody else can probably see it, but I can. <laughs> so I think I don't feel as though it's necessarily finished, but I do think it's a start. Um, and I think there isn't really a right or wrong way of knowing when a work is complete. I think it's more about just seeing how you actually feel. You just trust your feelings. And that piece is going to be glued on there. I think. But I would like to cut more into here, into these sections, and maybe have some different shapes and more colour, maybe some vibrancy to match up in here somewhere. Okay. Just going to glue this tiny section in. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm really looking forward to is seeing what you all create because these are, these can be standalone sessions, obviously. But in each of the three sessions, we explore and collage in a different way. Um, so, yeah, it'd be really lovely to see what you all make. And I will obviously keep on working with this in time for the next session next week. And we'll be looking in that session at portraiture, shapes, outlines, and bold colours. So we'll be actually working with those things. But let's see. And now I feel that need for a new section. So yeah, when I um when I make these words, I feel so relaxed. <laughs> I think you can probably tell. And sometimes I, I drift off a little bit in terms of the flow. I'm enjoying how this is going. Pop this underneath. Needs to go and take. We've had a comment from Nova Reed that says, so soothing, thank you. I think we can all agree this has been an extra relaxing workshop today. Thank you, Sharon. Thank we've, you. we've had another comment as well from Anne Fairley, who says, your collage looks like the number 10. Oh, really? Oh, it does. Th that's the zero, isn't it? And that looks like a one. That's really interesting. Oh, I wonder what that means. <laughs> Wonderful. I have to say, I feel very relaxed. <laughs> So what you want to ensure is that you've actually glued the sections properly. So as, as much as you might feel as though you have, it's worth turning the pieces over and just checking. 
because even after creating lots of collages, you can see my sections aren't all glued together properly. I'm just smoothing over just to check to see if there are any wrinkles or creases here. I definitely want to add some more sections here, I think, to match up some of this and maybe a section of this in here. Yeah. So Sharon, we're kind of drawing to the end of the workshop now. Do you have any kind of final tips to give to anyone that might be joining in? Um, I think just to keep going with the work, um, just to give it a go, trust your instincts and um, just have fun with it. It's more about the process. For me, this was completely about the process as it always is, but I think in this one more so than many of my other workshops. So just trust the process. If it feels too, a bit too much, take a step back and come back to it. But um, keep going with the work and hopefully I'll see you next week. <laughs> That's really fantastic. Thank you so much, Sharon, for the workshop today. Um, I just wanna kind of um, pass on a few of the lovely comments that we've had as well. So a big shout out to Powell Ward and the Ladywell unit. Thank you for joining us. We've also got um, everyone at Rookery Gardens in Birmingham. They've found it a very relaxing session and they've learned some new skills. So thank you so much. Um, we've had a comment from Sandra Archer that says this workshop has been fantastic. It's great to see your process of making. We've had a comment from Jade Sullivan as well. He says, thank you, Sharon. The children and I are loving this creative session oh. from Jade. So a big thank you to everyone that has joined us today and submitted a question to Sharon and um, taken part and created a collage. We'd absolutely love to see them. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. I'd like to say a huge thank you to Sharon on behalf of Hospital Rooms for such a lovely workshop today. And thank you to our friends at Anthropology EU for your support. Thank you to everyone that submitted a question today and let us know where you've been joining us from. It's been fantastic to have you all with us. It's now time to launch our end of workshop poll. If you could indicate how you found the workshop today, that will help us to improve the digital art school as we continue to grow our programme. So that should be popping up on your screens now. And I'll just give everyone a kind of a few moments to answer that. Thanks very much, everyone. All the responses coming through thick and fast. Brilliant. Thank you so much, everyone. We really appreciate your responses today. I'm just going to end that poll now. Thank you very much again for submitting your answers. Richard, if you could please bring back our slideshow. We've created some really fantastic collages with Sharon. We hope you will join us for parts two and three of the workshop. If you're still here with us, I'd like to share the story of Hospital Rooms and how the workshop today has come about. We are a London-based arts and mental health charity and we transform inpatient mental health units with extraordinary art. We began the Digital Art School in response to COVID-19 lockdowns when our in-person work in units was put on hold. It's been hugely important for us to build a wonderful creative community where we can join together and feel part of something special. We are now an award-winning programme. You can find the library of our past projects and all of the previous Digital Art School workshops on our YouTube channel, where you'll find a variety of original workshops with world-class artists. Please do have a look and subscribe to our channel. We're always uploading new videos. We also have a Digital Art School newsletter, which keeps you informed of upcoming workshops, the materials you'll need, along with any relevant downloads and links to last week's video. You can sign up for that at hospital-rooms.com. We'd absolutely love for you to share your artworks with us from any of our digital art school workshops by uploading to our online gallery. We love seeing the works you've created and we do share your work with our artists. You can do so anonymously or you can let us know your name and where you're joining us from. 
if you have created a collage today, either joining us live or watching back on demand, we'd love to see them. A reminder that every identity portrait artwork we receive from you for these three workshops with Sharon will be included in a beautiful printed keepsake book, which we'll be sending out for free to all of the mental health units and wards that have participated. We will be back next week on Thursday the 10th of June with Sharon Walters for the second of three workshops, Identity Portraits Part 2. This is another workshop supported by our friends at Anthropology EU and we'd really love to see you all for that. Please make sure to register on our website and via Eventbrite if joining through Anthro events. You can continue to build upon the artwork you've worked on today or create something entirely new. From myself and everyone at Hospital Rooms, thank you all so much once again for joining us today. A huge thank you again to Sharon for leading today's great workshop. Thank you to our friends at Anthropology and all of our supporters that have made a donation. We'll see you all again at 2pm next week, Thursday.